Alrighty, so for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the zero line on proc and how I think you should go about playing it. Uh, and for this, I'll be in my 54 lightweight. So for this game, what you can see is we're on the northern spawn of proc. Uh, if you look at the enemy team lineup, they've got about five TDs, an IS-7, a 140, and one light tank. And really, those are the only vehicles I care about. All the tier eights aren't really, um, apart from the TDs, aren't really a concern in my opinion. So... What you can see, this is what I do every single time I play on proc. I like to take advantage of uh, driving lanes, so to speak. I don't really know what else to call them, but what I mean by that is there are common routes that everyone takes, and what you can see is by driving up to E6 very, very quickly, it's very common for you to be able to take advantage of these routes. So first route you see that I'm in a position to take advantage of is the WZ, who's obviously in front of me. What I mean by that is that it's very common for light tanks to make this type of scouting run, uh, and if you're in this position, it's very, very easy to put a shot into them. Obviously, I mean, he's right in front of me and he gave me his side. The second lane that I want to talk about, or driving route, is the heavy tank route. So, from E6, you get multiple shots on multiple different angles. The main one that seems to get me the most damage is shooting at the side of heavy tanks, who are making this cross right here on the J line. So, from this location, I can put shots into those players, uh, and then, you know, I obviously I didn't shoot anyone on that line, I took a blind shot and then I broke something uh, so that proves that I didn't hit anyone, but you can see that's what I that's where I position myself right off the bat to try to get damage Next play on this map. This is a play I make so I can watch where my teammates go It's very common if you watch me stream. I pretty much do this all the time I will fall back now I do this out of habit because Artie likes to shoot at you You're the first one lit if you play on e6 Artie's aiming at you, etc, etc uh, so I'll run away. And what running away lets you do is it lets you see where your teammates are. So quick look around. I mean, there's no one on the zero line, obviously. We've got a low sniping and a mill sniping, uh, and then like eight tanks or so sitting in the one, two line. That's the kind of thing you won't really notice unless you're actually, unless you force yourself to look around. And so by taking myself out of the fight, I don't get clicked by RD. Obviously they don't have RD, but it's just a force of habit. And then I get to see where people are, um, for example, the number of people on the 1-2 line, or for example, the low, you know, basically all the players who are doing what you wouldn't expect on this map, you get to see that when you disengage yourself from the fight. So that's really important. What you can see is the zero line was open, so I came over here. Now I'm not planning on taking this location. The reason I'm uh, a bit hesitant about it is because they have a lot of camoed vehicles, I don't have optics. So it's very unlikely that if they sent a TD over to the hill, I would have spotted him because you can see I'm running vents and food as opposed to optics on this tank. So that's the situation I'm in. I'm expecting there to be a TD up here who just slipped through. Um, so that's, so I'm not going to be super aggressive because I don't really want to get hit by a grill or something to that effect. So what you can see is I'm sniping. Now the way I'm doing this is okay. What I will, I'm sort of angled away so I can turn my tank around really quickly if I need to. I think I should be facing downhill in case I were to get YOLO'd. But one thing I want to note what you to notice is I don't poke the hill aggressively until we're about two minutes in. Now the reason I'm doing this is actually really uh it's something I've learned to do lately. It's because if they are playing the hill, first of all, they don't they haven't seen anyone on the hills thus far. I know that because there's no one here except for myself and I haven't been lit while I'm in this location. So if I was what I expect is for them to start playing relatively aggressive on the hill, and you're gonna see that happening and it's going to happen because I'm not there to scare them, at least from their perspective. They don't see me. So, STRV is moving up. I'm going to move up to put shots into him. He has overcommitted because I haven't scared him away. So, if I had been here, he wouldn't try to take the hill, but uh, he went because he didn't see me. And now that he gets lit, he's backing off and he's kind of scared. And this is going to emphasize my point even more. You can see I'm poking this. And then a grill to my right get lit gets lit so this happens the only reason these guys have committed to this position is because there's been no one on the zero line to scare them away and naturally they want shots on the people in the mid so by by being sort of uh cautious for a good two minutes or so i'm able to get rid of like a free tier 10 tank and that's really 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 going to give our team an upper hand especially because a grill is in such a strong location now you are going to notice that these two tanks did slip by me probably because i didn't have optics but that's the uh the risk i choose to take now i'm lit here obviously i'm getting shot at so i'm gonna fall back this is the point in time where it's very common for light tanks to get yoloed per se because what will happen is they see oh well there's just one li one light tank on the zero line so some guy 
typically in an autoloader will YOLO you. And you can see, that's kind of what the STRV seems to be trying to do by, by challenging me like this. Now, at the time I saw him on the map, but he got lit, so he was going to fall back. Obviously, he won't YOLO me. If, like, normally, if someone's lit, they're going to be a bit more cautious. And he's already run away after getting spotted, so I wasn't too worried about him. You can see he fell back, and that's when I'm going to start to push up. Now... What I assume happened here is the E5 saw the grill be aggressive and he thought he could do the same so he's taking the hill. Uh, normally you won't find this but he's in this position and it's going to be kind of annoying so I'm going to put shots into him. This is how you want to play the hill. I'm using these bushes right here to try to keep me unspotted from the T2065. It works very very well and now he's pushed up to this spot where uh, he could proxy swap me if I'm not care if I'm not careful. So I'm Staying away from him, I don't want the Centurion, the T10, and the 140 in the middle to be shooting at me. Uh, but, you know, there's a bit of indecision going on, obviously. I kind of want a spot for my team. I want them to kill the E5, but I also don't want to get shot at people in the mid. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to ignore the E5. As long as he isn't spotting at me, I don't care. My teammates do have shots in him, and maybe I can give them some sort of support in the mid. Um... But then he's going to take a lot of damage. Like, I'm just going to get a free shot right here. So I'm playing it relatively carefully, but you'll notice that I think I'm being aggressive and passive-aggressive, passive, passive -aggressive, I guess. Uh, because what I want to do is I want to be able to put shots into this guy, but I don't want to lose my HP to the people in the mid. That happens more than you would guess. So a couple of things. So when I'm going to poke on this guy, when I finally decide to do it, I'm unspotted at the time of poking. So chances are that these guys are not going to be pre-aimed on me because there's people spotted in the mid more than likely uh, so it's a bit of a safe play they're not going to have their guns pointed towards me and then secondly this guy's not looking at me and then thirdly i've pointed my tank downwards because what i'm going to do is i'm going to poke on him i'm planning on getting lit i'm going to get lit on purpose almost and i want to be able to get out of here as quickly as i can so you can see and put a shot into him he backs up he's now a one shot for the e100 like certainly a one shot i get lit i take a hit and that bounces because the centurion 7 won but you'll notice multiple people shot at me they were pre-aimed on me i suppose uh and because i was in a position to get away like because i was facing downhill i was able to get away from that engagement relatively quickly now this guy's a one shot he isn't gonna die so eventually i'm gonna go after him but you can see there are shots in the middle and that 140 isn't even looking at me so i'm gonna try to put a shot into him that one misses and just tracks him but uh, he's down a repair kit and so that's a good thing, I suppose. Now, right here, you're going to see I'm going to be relatively cautious. One thing I do want to point out is I'm going to make the exact same play despite having just done it. Some people are too scared to do this, but the reason I've decided to do this is because I just confirmed how many tanks were ignoring me. So, like, everyone except the 110 wasn't looking at me, and so I feel comfortable just going for the kill on this guy. You can see I poke up here, he spots me, I shoot him, get the kill, and... Um, going to get safe and not even really get shot at. So that's the play I've made. I'm up to three kills right now, and pretty much I've won the zero line. So what the situation we're in right now is there's no one spotted or trying to actively fight for the hill. So what I did is I took a look at the enemy team and I said, okay, how many are lit and how many how many tanks does the enemy team have left? And so if you count, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I recall, they have nine tanks left on the enemy team. So what that tells me is the AMX AC48 hasn't been spotted all game. And normally if a tank has not been spotted all game, he's either sitting at K7 or K1 J1. So what I expect is him to be sitting at K1 J1. So I'm just going to push this STRV because he's alone uh, as far as my counting skills tell me. And... Um, that's the play I'm going to make. So you can see I get distracted by the 7-1, uh, but once I take that shot, I'm going to push into the SDRV because I don't want him to be ridge fighting me. And you're going to notice he's run away. So he hasn't been, he hasn't even been helping his C2065. He hasn't helped the grill. He's just left the fight. Probably the best move for him to have made. Um, and that's going to give me this ridge right here. So this is an aspect of the zero line that a lot of people don't talk about is once you've won the train tracks or once you've won the hill, effectively you've won the train tracks and how do you go once you have the train tracks? Well, what you can see is I'm going to spot anyone who's back here. Normally you'd find an arty player right here or so and maybe a TD on these rails if they aren't very bright. Um, but you can see they've got a 110 who's been defending all game. That was a really good play by him. He was in the middle, he left the middle, he came to K7 to counter me, I suppose. In my opinion, that was a really, really well thought out play by him. Now right here, there's a one shot 7-1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bit of a YOLO play. The reason I'm going to make this play is because I don't expect TDs sitting in J1, J2, K2 to be looking at me. They're probably aimed in the middle of the map or down the two line because... TD players seem to just love to aim in one location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the one shot 7-1 because I want to get rid of him. I don't want him 
ridge fighting this entire time. So I push him, get the kill, and now I'm not going to stick around to fight the 110 because it's very likely that TDs will have, you know, turned their their whole tanks to shoot at me. And you can see someone returns a, fire, a shot at me, probably the pilot, but uh, I'm not going to stick around brawling with a T10 or a 110. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm basically just brawling with the 110. I'm driving away to make it look like I'm going to go play the hill, and then I wait until he's unspotted because I don't know exactly how long it takes for the 54 lightweight to get unlit by tanks. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I just drove away for as long as it uh, felt reasonable for, it, and then I'm going to come back. And what you're going to notice is the one the, the 110 actually falls for it. Uh, understandably, though, there's tanks in the mid, and he's got his rear pointed towards me. I'm able to put a shot into him for free, and now he's on 800 hit points, and that's going to even out the fight a bit because we're on even hit points. Right here, you can see the 110 is coming back towards me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle. Now, one thing you have to know about this angle is it does open you up to TDs, uh, like it's easier for TDs to hit you who are over here, but I'm not spotted as I'm making this play, so the 110 crests, I'm able to put a shot into his side, and then someone else hits him, so we've done 773 damage total to the 110. He's a one-shot, and that's kind of how you have to deal with this, that's how you get to deal with this situation, basically. So what you can see is the 110's given up, we pick up our fifth kill, and uh, here's something interesting, actually. I, I, there's nothing really interesting, in my opinion, after this replay, but what you're going to notice, something that I do, is I'm going to sit in the open. I'm just going to sit here, and I get shot by a Yag Tiger right here. And so that's... <laughs> I did not think I was lit, you know, I had been, I just killed the 110, gave it a couple seconds, got safe, and then the Yag Tiger actually puts a shot into me. So if anyone knows how long it takes for a tank to get unspotted after they've killed someone, please let me know. I also understand that he could have that crew skill that keeps his tank spotting after he dies for a couple seconds. So, you know, I'm interested in, in your comments from there, but basically what you're going to see happen is I'm just playing it safely because I'm low on HP, I get some more shots onto people, and slowly we close out the rest of the map from them, and uh, I fail to get a top gun, so that's the game. Let's go look at the end plates and we'll take it from there. Alrighty, so as you can see that was a mastery badge, a bunch of other badges that I don't care about. 2431 spotting, 10 shots or 10 modules damage or something to that effect, 4213 damage and 5 kills. Uh, made credits, 6000 credits, I ran out of AP, so uh, like... I ran out of standard, so I ended up resorting to firing gold, but uh, such is the life of light tanks. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like. I mean, fuck that shit, I guess. Just fucking watch more videos if you want to see more of them. So um, yeah, I'm a professional YouTuber. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.